Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this fox woodland themed tribal cake. So let's get right into it. I'm starting out with two six inch cakes that I've cut in half and I'm going to be filling those with some Swiss meringue buttercream using my small offset spatula. I'm making sure my buttercream is nice and level and once my cake is stacked up I'm going to cover the entire outside with a thin layer of buttercream to act as my crumb coat to lock in all those crumbs and then I'm going to pop that into the fridge for about 25 minutes to firm up. When you can touch your finger to the buttercream and none of it comes off it's ready for the final ice. I added a big dollop to the top of my cake and then using my spatula and my turntable I'm just evening out the buttercream on the top so it's nice and level and then I'm going to add more buttercream all the way around my cake and going around with my bench scraper I'm going to smooth that out. For all of the buttercream that accumulated on the edge of my cake I'm just using my bench scraper, you could use your spatula to scrape that into the center, just being careful to keep it level so that I don't disturb the smoothness of my cake. That's going back in the fridge to chill and next I started with my fondant. I have some white that I'm rolling out on my cornstarch surface to about an eighth of an inch thick. I'm picking that up with my fondant roller and draping it over my chilled cake and then quickly just using my hands and my fondant smoother I'm pushing all the air out from the top of my cake and then working my way down just pulling out the skirt and smoothing it until I reach the bottom. I went over the whole thing one more time with my fondant smoother and then I cut away the excess at the bottom using a pizza cutter. My cake is going to be two tiers so I need some support. I'm using just regular straws for this because my cake is very small but if it's any larger I suggest using bubble tea straws which are a lot bigger or some wooden dowels. So I have four of them here and I'm inserting them evenly into the bottom layer and then with my scissors I'm just going to snip those so that they are flush with the cake. I added a thin schmear of buttercream and then I have a little four inch tier that I buttercreamed and covered in fondant the exact same way I just showed you and I'm going to pop that right on top. On to the decorating. I am rolling out some long thin ropes of fondant for my birch tree top. I want them to be different, some thick, some thinner, and then I'm cutting them and I'm going to line the top of my cake. I'm doing half at a time because I do need the fondant to be a little bit pliable so I didn't want it to be too hard by the time I covered the whole thing. It really helps to look at a picture of a birch tree but I'm taking my fondant tool and just adding a couple notches into my fondant and just roughing it up a bit so it's not so smooth. To add even more texture I grabbed my X-Acto knife and just added a bunch of lines into each piece. Birch bark can look kind of peely. So with my X-Acto knife again, I'm just digging into the fondant a little bit and then dragging it down. I have some black color dust here and a fine tip paintbrush and all I'm doing is just 
brushing that color in between each of my lugs. And I don't want to have too much color on my paintbrush because it can be really concentrated and intense. So after I dip it into the powder, I just kind of brushed it off on my piece of paper towel before I went in. Taking more of my color dust, I'm just going into all the little nicks and notches that I made in my fondant before. So this is what it looked like after I was done shading it. You can see it's kind of like a faded look. So to make it a little more intense, I have some black food coloring gel with my paintbrush again, and I'm just adding in more lines and little splotches all over the place. I wanted to make some feathers for my cake, so I have some teal, some pink, some orange, and some ivory fondant. These are gonna be the main colors for my cake, and I'm rolling out some of that teal, and using my X-Acto knife, I'm cutting out this like long lemon-ish shape. I used my spatula to indent that middle part just because I didn't want to accidentally cut through with my X-Acto knife. And then using my X-Acto knife, I'm scoring each side so that the lines go slightly up. And I'm scoring them over and over and over again. You want to get in as many lines as possible, but be careful not to cut through. Except on the edges, you can see I frayed them a bit. I did cut through there because it gives it more of like a fluffy look. I cut out a bunch of different sizes out of all the colors I had and then I set them aside to dry on a piece of saran wrap so they wouldn't dry completely flat. You could also use a piece of aluminum foil. To make my fox, I have some fondant that I dyed using some orange and a little bit of brown because you want it to be a bit of a darker color. And then I added a little bit of tylose to my fondant as well. I'm tapering out the edges of my ball. Again, think kind of lemon shape. You want them to be pointed and then I'm pressing it against my counter and drawing those points so they face down. I rolled out some white fondant pretty thin and then I draped that over my face. You want to have it just a little less than three quarters of the way covered. Then with my X-Acto knife, I'm just marking out the shape of the face. I want it to taper down in the center where his nose is going to be. So I just roughly trace this and then I cut and then I just shaped it a little more. I used my fingers just to smooth out the edges and then I had something that looked like this. I rolled out a larger oval for the nose and placed that right where the white tapered into a point and then with two smaller ovals I added the eyes. I do apologize for my gross looking thumb. I had burned myself a long time ago and the skin's just healing and I got some red food coloring in there so it looks super gnarly but I swear to god I'm clean. Using my X-Acto knife, I sketched out his cute little mouth, and then with two balls of pink fondant, I added like a little blush on his cheeks. For the body, I have more of my orange fondant that I've added some Tylos to and I'm rolling that out into a teardrop shape. I added that to the top of my cake and then inserted a wooden skewer just to give me some more support, making sure there was just enough poking through for me to attach the head. I popped that on there, just attaching it with a little bit of water. For the tummy, I rolled out some more of my white fondant and then using my X-Acto knife, I cut out this ovally kind of shape and then just cut off the bottom so it would be flush with the cake. I rolled out two smaller balls of orange fondant and then using my fingers, I just shaped that into a triangle and with my X-Acto knife, I blunted the end and placed those on either side of his head for his ears. I wanted him to have a big floofy tail, so with more of my orange fondant, I'm rolling out this snaky shape and then just tapering off the ends 
You can see one of them is tapered a little more than the other. That is going to be the part that attaches to the butt. To give his tail a white tip, I wrapped a little piece of white fondant around the end and then just kept working that in my fingers until that seam disappeared. I pointed the end and then with my X-Acto knife, I cut out a couple of notches. Again, using some water, I just attached that to the front of his body, wrapping that thinner end around to the back of him. When I was done, I had something like this. I decided to paint my ivory colored feathers gold. So I have some Rolcom Super Gold, which is my absolute favorite. I mixed it with a little bit of clear vanilla extract and then I brushed that on and left it to dry. To make the teepees going around the bottom of the cake, I have this triangle template. You don't need to use this. I just wanted every single one to be the same size. So I'm cutting out a bunch of all the different colors I have. I lined them around the bottom of my cake. Initially, I left a little gap between each one, but I later went back and changed that so that the bottoms were touching. You can do whatever design you like for these. I'm just gonna show you how I made one of them. I just added different layers of the color. I put some texture in there. And then for the top, I made tiny versions of the feathers that I made before, as well as some little flowers. It's really simple to make those little flowers. All I did was rolled out a little strip of fondant and then you just roll it up. So this is what a few of them looked like when they were finished. To attach my feathers to the cake, I'm grabbing the larger ones and then just flipping them over and placing a wooden skewer on top. I'm grabbing another little strip of fondant in the same color and just placing that over top, attaching using some water. I inserted that feather into the cake and then just using some piping gel, I attached my other feathers to that larger feather. I added another bunch of feathers to the top right behind that fox in the exact same way. And then this was the final result guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. I will see you in the next one.